Welcome back to the Jedi Council Room. I'm David Lee, your Identity Jedi. And today we're going to talk about authentication versus authorization. So I feel like we've come a long way with authentication and authorization. There's a lot of standards that have come out there. But in doing so, I feel like we've muddied the waters a little bit to where sometimes for some newbies or people who are coming to this industry or even some people who've been around, it's sometimes hard to tell what's authentication versus authorization. And to be honest, a lot of the time we've mixed it too. So in today's episode, we're going to break down auth in, authentication, auth C, authorization in some simple terms. You ready? Let's do it. Let's start with authentication. Now, really, this is about understanding like who a person is, right? So we want to verify that you are who you say you are. And we'll do that sometimes in a multiple, uh, multiple ways, multiple factors, such as MFA, multi-factor authentication. We'll get to that later. But really, we just want to understand, are you who you say you are? And we'll do that by having them answer some questions about themselves. Please don't do this anymore. Um, we may give them, prompt them for certain things. Like if they have their phone, we might send a code to their phone to say, hey, if you have this phone, I, this phone, right? We've seen that that's David's phone. So at some point, I've registered that device to you. But the whole point is we're trying to find different factors to make sure that we understand you are who you say you are. But they are who we thought they were, and we let them off the hook. Thanks, Coach. Uh, so that leads us to the next thing, which is authorization. So we've determined that we know who you are, thanks to Coach Cindy Green, and now we want to authorize what you can do. So it's, I know you, but do I trust you? Um, at this point, we've verified that this is a valid user that's come into our system and now we want to look for some type of attributes or entitlements or claims rights to let this person within the system do certain operations and you want authorization in this case obviously because maybe we want a regular user to come in and view reports or look at certain things but we don't want them to delete the data we want to save that for admins or maybe we want them to be able to run reports but we don't want them to be able to process the reports and submit reports things of that nature and so the difference between those two is authorization rights, right? Who's authorized to do what actions? Um, for an example, like let's say somebody comes over and they're not really a friend, they're kind of an acquaintance, you kind of know them through somebody else, you only let them get on the guest Wi-Fi. They don't get the home Wi-Fi because, you know, they're guests and that's what the guest Wi-Fi is for. Now, you guys, you guys want to do that? Maybe this is me. So let's walk through an example. And I love to give analogies and stories, so let's tell a story with an analogy of how this kind of works. Because these concepts are actually very simple and we use them every day, you probably just don't think about it. So let's do this. Once upon a time, there is a knock at your door. This is like pre-COVID when people are actually allowed to see each other. Well, we won't get there. So there's a knock at your door. The first thing that we do when somebody thinks, hey, there's a knock at the door, we hear a knock at the door is, who is it? And we might actually say that out loud, like, hey, who is it? At that moment, we're starting our authentication process. We're trying to figure out who is at the door. And we're looking for, we'll do a call out to understand if I can hear a voice that I recognize and a name that I recognize, because then I can authenticate that that's who that person is. So we'll start with the basis and say, you say, who is it? And it's your brother-in-law or your brother. Brother calls out and say, hey, it's Dan. You go, okay, I recognize that name, that Dan is my brother's name. It's not really my brother's name, but in the story it is. And I recognize his voice, right? So therefore, I've authenticated that that is Dan, and maybe I let him in. But maybe I'm like, eh, I wasn't expecting Dan. I heard Dan's voice. That's weird. Maybe I want another factor. Uh, maybe I'll pull up my little ring, look at the doorbell camera, or I'll walk over to the door and look through the peephole, and I see that it's Dan. So I've done two things. I've said, look, I've heard his voice, matched the name, and I've verified with visuals that it is Dan. So even in just our everyday lives, we've done authentication, we've done multi-factor authentication, and using these different things that we do on an everyday basis to authenticate, to verify that this is the person who it says is before they come into our home. So we've done our authentication. Now let's, let's talk about the authorization path. We open the door, we let them in the home. So in this case, let's say it's my brother. My brother comes over and it's my brother. We grew up together right? Yeah, love-hate relationship sometimes, but all siblings do that. But anyway, it's my brother. So he's got access to the house. He can go in the kitchen. He can go in the guest bathroom. He can go in the private bathroom. It's my brother. We're family. But let's say he brings a friend with him that I don't know. That's more of a guest, right? So then that person can access the common areas and go to the guest bathroom, go in the kitchen. But he's not going upstairs into my bathroom. He's not going upstairs into my bedroom. You know, he doesn't have those rights. I don't have the level of trust 
to give him to roam around where things could wind up missing. My brother hangs out with some shady characters sometimes. Nah, that's probably just my brother. Your family's probably just fine. But the point is, that person's not authorized to go through all acts, all parts of the house, only certain parts, right? To take that step a little further, let's say that you have a contractor coming over to fix something, your washing machine's out, or your refrigerator's broken, that person come in, you're gonna take them to where the refrigerator is or the washing machine is, but not necessarily roam about all of the house, right? You only wanna keep them to the area that they need to be, right? Authorization. So there you have it. It's a simple example, authentication, authorization. In real life, as we apply that to actual digital systems, again, it's being able to know who somebody is when they log in, present them with different factors. It's a password, that's codes, uh, you know, MFA uh, authenticators, things to, so we know who that person is. And then once they're inside, understanding different claims about that person, what groups might they be in, what roles, what attributes do they have to give them the different permissions within the system. So, a couple of tips going forward. Authentication, who are you? We want to verify that you are who you say you are. So when you think authentic authentication, any type of factor, any type of system that's challenging a user to present something so we know who they are. Authorization are the claims, the attributes, the entitlements about that user that allow them to do different things in the systems. So there you have it. Authentication authorization. Hopefully that was simple and easy to follow. We will do more videos to dig deeper into those topics. As always, this has been David Lee for the Jedi Council Room. Hope you're staying safe. Don't forget to wash those hands. We'll see you guys later.